This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading is by Michael Sirwa, Michael.Sirwa, S I R O I S dot com. Penguin Island by Anatole France. Book Two The Ancient Times. Book Two, Chapter Ten The Dragon of Alca. Continuation. The days passed by, and no maiden arose in the island to combat the monster. And in the wooden monastery, old Mail, seated on a bench in the shade of an old fig tree, accompanied by a pious monk called Regimental, kept asking himself anxiously and sadly how it was that there was not in Alca a single virgin fit to overthrow the monster. He sighed, and Brother Regimental sighed too. At that moment, old Mail called young Samuel who happened to pass through the garden, and said to him, I have meditated anew, my son, on the means of destroying the dragon who devours the flower of our youth, our flocks, and our harvests. In this respect, the story of the dragons of St. Rioc and of St. Paul de Leon seems to me particularly instructive. The dragon of St. Rioc was six fathoms long. His head was derived from the cock and the basilisk, his body from the ox and the serpent, he, he ravaged the banks of the Elorn in the time of King Bristocus. St. Rioc, then aged two years, led him by a leash to the sea, in which the monster drowned himself of his own accord. St. Paul's dragon was sixty feet long and not less terrible. The blessed apostle of Leon bound him with his stole and allowed a young noble of great purity of life to lead him. These examples prove that in the eyes of God a chaste young man is as agreeable as a chaste girl. Heaven makes no distinction between them. For this reason, my son, if you believe what I say, we will both go to the coast of shadows. When we reach the dragon's cavern, we will call the monster in a loud voice, and when he comes forth I will tie my stole round his neck, and you will lead him to the sea, where he will not fail to drown himself. At the old man's words, Samuel cast down his head and did not answer. "'You seem to hesitate, my son,' said Mail. Brother Regimental, contrary to his custom, spoke without being addressed. "'There is at least cause for some hesitation,' said he. "'St. Rioc was only two years old when he overcame the dragon. "'Who says that nine or ten years later he could have done as much?' Remember, father, that the dragon who is devastating our island has devoured little Elo, and four or five other young boys. Brother Samuel is not so presumptuous as to believe that at nineteen years of age he is more innocent than they were at twelve and fourteen. Alas, added the monk with a groan, who can boast of being chaste in this world, where everything gives the example and model of love? where all things in nature, animals and plants, show us the caresses of love, and advise us to share them. Animals are eager to unite in their own fashion. But the various marriages of quadrupeds, birds, fishes, and reptiles are far from equaling in lust the nuptials of the trees. The greatest extremes of lewdness that the pagans have imagined in their fables are outstripped by the simple flowers of the field. And if you knew the irregularities of lilies and roses, you would take those chalices of impurity, those vases of scandal, away from your altars. Do not speak in this way, Brother Regimental, answered Old Mail. Since they are subject to the laws of nature, animals and plants are always innocent. They have no souls to save, whilst men— You are right, replied Brother Regimental. It is quite a different thing. But do not send young Samuel to the dragon. The dragon might devour him. For the last five years Samuel is not in a state to show his innocence to monsters. In the year of the comet, the devil, in order to seduce him, put in his path a milkmaid, who was lifting up her petticoat to cross a ford. Samuel was tempted, but he overcame the temptation. The devil, who never tires, sent him the image of that young girl in a dream. The shade did what the reality was unable to accomplish, and Samuel yielded. When he awoke, he moistened his couch with his tears. But alas, 
Repentance did not give him back his innocence. As he listened to this story, Samuel asked himself how his secret could be known, for he was ignorant that the devil had borrowed the appearance of Brother Regimental, so as to trouble the hearts of the monks of Alca. And old Mail remained deep in thought, and kept asking himself in grief, Who will deliver us from the dragon's tooth? Who will preserve us from his breath? Who will save us from his look? However, the inhabitants of Alca began to take courage. The laborers of Dombey and the neat herds of Belmont swore that they themselves would be of more avail than a girl against the ferocious beast, and they exclaimed as they stroked the muscles on their arms, Let the dragon come! Many men and women had seen him. They did not agree about his form and his figure, but all now united in saying that he was not as big as they had thought, and that his height was not much greater than a man's. The defense was organized. Towards nightfall, watches were stationed at the entrances of the villages, ready to give the alarm, and during the night companies armed with pitchforks and scythes protected the paddocks in which the animals were shut up. Indeed, once in the village of Anis, some plucky laborers surprised him as he was scaling Morio's wall, and as they had flails, scythes, and pitchforks, they fell upon him and pressed him hard. One of them, a very quick and courageous man, thought to have run him through with his pitchfork, but he slipped in a pool and so let him escape. The others would certainly have caught him had they not waited to pick up the rabbits and fowls that he dropped in his flight. Those laborers declared to the elders of the village that the monster's form and proportions appeared to them human enough, except for his head and his tail, which were in truth terrifying. End of chapter 10